The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary John. Hello and thanks for joining us for Simply Southern. I'm Mary John. And I'm Jim Allen. If you're a fan of heavy equipment, on today's program, we'll show you where to go to get started on a career in the logging business. We see a shortage of loggers coming and we like to put these schools on in rural Alabama just to let young people know that logging is a good career. For six generations, the Miller family has been turning one-of-a-kind stoneware pottery pieces here in Alabama. That's how come it was handed down through the generations. They was being at the pottery, you know, and watching their father work. And that's how you, you know, learn it, watching and doing it. Sydney Phelps of Bonnie Plants is doing a little home improvement today and we'll show you how you can harvest rainwater for use in your garden. But to get us started, we'll meet a man who trained some cunning canines for their home on the range. What sustains us? Food, family, faith. Alabama farmers live those things every day. They conserve our resources clothe our families, and fill our tables. They cultivate jobs for our communities and values for our future. Farmers grow it all right here in Alabama. There's no such thing as downtime when you own a farm. This is your land. You tend it and try to get the most from it, no matter the weather or time of day. It's been that way for generations. And for generations, your local quality co-op store has been there for you. With a full range of agriculture supplies and services, from feed to fertilizer, seed to grain storage, and the right hardware for any application, you'll always find what you need. Plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. Human history is full of clever folks. Just think, somewhere along the way, a sheep herder got tired enough of chasing those woolly rascals around to actually turn a predator into his number one helper. And so the stock dog was born. Those instincts remain strong in today's herding breeds, but it takes a little help from a guy like James Thomas to really put it out to pasture. Trying to get a bunch of heavy, stubborn livestock to go where you want can be tough. While some folks rely on pickups or four-wheelers to rustle up the herd, Ann Crawley prefers four legs and a wagon tail. There's a lot of handicaps to being a female in the cattle business, and one of them is, you know, pinning cattle and working them, and um, there are times when I just have to do it myself, and I go and I get Lexi or Jill, and. I'm done in a few minutes, and so it really, they really helped me a lot. Ann grew up with a border collie as a pet, but putting the instincts of this classic herding breed to work on her family farm called for the help of a training pro. One year I was showing cattle at the National Peanut Festival, and I saw Mr. Thomas do a demonstration with his three dogs, and I said, I gotta get in touch with this fella. I, I want another Border Collie. James Thomas has been working with stock dogs since he was 17. His Slocum-based company, Valley Border Collies, has built a reputation for developing these clever canines into first-rate round em uppers When you get complete with this foundation 30-day training, it's the same as if you was in a 100-acre field. And, uh, and once, that, once the rancher sees that they don't have to have call uh, the neighbor down the road to help them pin the cattle, they got two dogs that uh, go out and bring the cattle in. That's the key to it. That's the key. Time, time saver. James spends short sessions of usually 10 to 15 minutes bonding with the dog, familiarizing it with livestock, and then slowly training it to respond to a number of basic verbal commands. You got to come by, that's to the left. You got to wait to me, that's to the right. And then you got a, what you call a lie down command. When you say there, lie down, it's got to lie down. And then you, you just gradually, gradually increase the foundation. While the dogs quickly pick up on these verbal cues, 
they can be trained to nonverbal alternatives just as easily. I just made up this uh, for her right, and uh, her left is the lower part of Whipple Will. And her uh, lie down is just, it's real handy for way off, but I get used to using it up, and I use it up close too, you know. They can use it either way, they'll, they'll listen either way. As trucks and ATVs have evolved, dogs probably spend more time on the ranch as pets than they do herding livestock. But James has seen again and again how effective man's best friend can be with the right teacher. I had a calf one time that was on my jerseys, and I didn't have a catch pen. Um, and I tried feed, I tried uh, everything I could. I finally just said, you know what? I've had enough, I'm just gonna see, you know, let Jill put her, put the calf in the stall. And in five minutes, I had that calf pinned and in the stall, the trailer backed up and the calf on the trailer. And my dad came in and he was like, I can't believe that. If you look at it, the, the product you, that you're gonna develop for that person, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Most of the time when they come get their dog and they see what the dog done, he go, goes and brings the cattle and he just, he's standing there, not in the middle of the gate, but back off, got the gate open. He says, the cattle come in. He says, yeah. He said, I'd have gave twice that much. I said, well, I'm still open. That's right. <laughs> Mary, it's really fascinating to see those little dogs running animals several times their size around the field. It's hard enough to get mine to bark at a squirrel. Well, I do know if cows came in the shape of a tennis ball, my dog would probably win every trial he entered. But since that's not the case, I'm glad we have veteran trainers like Mr. Thomas around. True enough. I suspect mine are good enough at herding me around already that I don't need James giving them any more new technique. And you do have a few. I do. <laughs> Coming up next on Simply Southern, you'll meet Eric and Steve Miller, who are fifth and sixth generation potters. Soybean is a very versatile product. We make crayons out of it. A lot of the combines you see rolling through the fields have a lot of plastic side panels that are made from a soy product. The Soybeans that we grow on our farm mostly goes into chicken feed. Soybean production in Alabama employs over 10,000 people. We grow some of the best soybeans in the world. We go the extra mile to make sure when our name is stamped on it, we know it's the best product we can produce. They take you where you want to go, where you need to go, and sometimes where you thought you'd never go. If we're lucky, the road of life is smooth, and the curves are just part of the adventure. All for a better life. Enjoy your road. Alpha Insurance. All for a better life. Pay your bill, file a claim, and more with the Alpha To Go app. A farmer has to live on faith. We do all we can do, but we can only control so much. Alabama is the second largest poultry growing state in the nation, so we're trying our best to grow all the corn we can for that. What we produce not only feeds and clothes all of the United States, but about half of what we make goes on to the world market. We've been able to improve yields, have some things that, that can help us produce a better crop. I'm proud of the product we make and proud that I can say I'm an Alabama farmer. 